Distinguished colleagues, we are gathered here in this hall today as a result of a resolution called Uniting for Peace. Sadly, this emergency session has nothing to do with peace. Every member state here today who is convinced that we are about to discuss yet another round of conflict in the Middle East, another dispute between Israel and the Palestinians is wrong. The October 7th massacre and what ensued has nothing to do with the Palestinians. Nothing. It has nothing to do with the Arab-Israeli conflict or the Palestinian question. This is not a war with the Palestinians. Israel is at war with the genocidal jihadist Hamas terror organization. Only. It is the law-abiding democracy of Israel against modern-day Nazis. These are the facts. Hamas do not care about the Palestinian people. They do not care about peace or dialogue. Hamas has only one goal to annihilate Israel and murder every single Jew on the face of the earth. Their original charter makes this very clear. I'll read you a few lines. Israel will exist and will continue to exist until Islam will obliterate it. Another quote. There is no solution for the Palestinian problem except by jihad. Another quote, the day of judgment will not come about until Muslims fight Jews and kill them. Friends, on October 7th, it became clear to the entire world that Hamas's charter was not a compilation of empty words. It was an action plan, an action plan. Imagine a bright sunny day. Clear skies, music in the air, young people are dancing, a rave, a concert for peace. Yes, for peace. It is really, it is early morning on the Holy Sabbath. The sun is just risen to mark a new day. It is also a festive Jewish high holiday, Simchat Torah. Simchat Torah means the joy of the Torah, where we celebrate the book of books, our holy Bible. And then, in one split second, this idyllic Eden became hell on earth. The peaceful morning air was pierced with the wail of rocket sirens. Thousands, I'm telling you, thousands of Hamas mortars and rockets rained down indiscriminately on many Israeli cities and villages. But the rockets were only cover for the pogrom, the pogrom that followed. Barbaric Hamas terrorists invaded Israel from the sea, the land, and the air. They came with one purpose, one purpose only, to savagely murder every living thing they encountered. Hamas Nazi murders went from house to house with hit lists, a thoroughly planned, willful, premeditated attack. They brutally murdered civilians in their beds. They drove pickup trucks with machine guns. Yes, we all remember, just like ISIS, and fired blindly at hundreds of young people at a concert. 300, 300 were burned alive or butchered in that concert. Much of what remained were clumps of flesh and, and bloody limbs. Parents had to bring their children's toothbrushes for DNA so they could figure out whose limb belonged to who. These Hamas monsters raped women and children, parading naked girls that they raped and bodied that they defiled through the streets of Gaza why thousands, and I'm telling you, thousands, you can see the footage, jeered and cheered. The savages tortured small babies, 
Just like the Nazis, Hamas terrorists removed infants from their cribs. Yes, we have it on video. Swung them repeatedly against the ground until their skulls became a pulp. Children were murdered in front of their parents and parents in front of their children. I've seen a video of a terrorist filmed by him, by himself, who tossed a grenade into a bomb shelter with a father and his two young boys inside. The father was killed instantly and the two boys ran out of the shelter screaming that their father is dead and that they want to be dead too. All this is occurring, believe it or not, as the monster who murdered their father calmly helps himself to the contents of the family's fridge. Yes, no horror movie compares to the pure brutality that Hamas carried out. No, none. Amit Man, a 22-year-old from Kibbutz Be'eri and a paramedic for Magen David Adom, Israel's Red Cross. She dedicated her life, literally, and you will understand why, to saving others. When the Hamas monsters invaded the kibbutz, Amit ran to the clinic to treat as many wounded as she could. For hours, hours, Amit worked non-stop trying to save lives. She knew the sadistic terrorists were outside her clinic because she heard the gunfire, but she stayed there. She was committed to saving lives, not running away. Finally, the terrorist burst into her clinic and put a bullet, a bullet through her brain. She was a Magen David Adom paramedic, the Israeli Red Cross, in uniform. But that didn't stop these savages. This is how the rescue teams found Amit. Ambulances were set on fire. Not one, many. Dozens of Magen David Adom medical teams were in, intentionally targeted on their way to tend to the wounded. And many other par paramedics were murdered. Barzilai Hospital in my hometown city, Ashkelon, in Israel, suffered direct hits from Hamas rockets. Not for the first time. Hamas has been deliberately firing rockets at it for years, for years, intentionally. Yet, not a single condemnation of this barbarity has been mentioned here. Not here, not by the Security Council, not by the Secretary General, and not by this absurd resolution. It seems that hospitals and medical teams only need to be protected as long as they are not Israeli. The hypocrisy is beyond belief, beyond belief. The brutal ISIS-like monsters abducted over 220 hostages from Israel and dozens of other countries, including babies, babies, children, persons with disabilities, the elderly and Holocaust survivors. Kfir Bibas, Kfir Bibas is nine months old. Nine months old and he is being held right now in Gaza as a hostage. Nine months old. What, what barbaric terrorists can do such a thing? And together with him, 30 other children. 30 other children. We saw Hamas's brutality in Israel. I cannot begin to fathom what horrors the hostages are enduring right now. As we speak here, 20 days have gone by and Israel is still counting her dead. It took weeks to collect all of the bodies. Some bodies are burnt like pieces of coal. It is almost impossible to identify them. Countless burned bodies have been found with ash in their throats, meaning they were still alive still alive when lit on fire, intentionally, by the Hamas terrorists. 
A clump of charred human remains that was burned beyond recognition was found. At first, the medical pers personnel couldn't figure out what they were looking at. Yet, after a CT scan, it became clear that they were two spines, not one. Two spines bound together with wire. One belonging to an adult, and the other, the small spine, of a child. So just try to imagine that parents, that parents' feeling as they and their child were burning alive, burning alive. The painful screaming of the love of their life was the last thing they heard, the last thing. Do you not think it's unbelievable that this resolution here today and this session are not solely focused on Hamas's atrocities? When reading this resolution, Hamas seems to be missing in action. The drafters of the resolution claim to be concerned about peace, yet the depraved Murders who initiated this war are not even mentioned in the resolution, not even mentioned. They see each one of you as puppet. They write a resolution completely devoid of any content related to the situation. They assume that you have already forgotten who it is that is responsible for the inhumane violence, and they just expect you to support it automatically. This resolution is a disgrace to your intelligence, a disgrace. It is unfathomable that such a resolution, one that doesn't even mention Hamas, could possibly be voted upon here. Let that sink in, please. Distinguished representatives, representatives Hamas carried out atrocities, the likes of which we have not seen since the Holocaust. Yet, unlike the Holocaust, where the evidence we have is mostly black and white photographs and soundless footage, here the proof is in high definition. Because some of it is from, yes, security footage, but much of it is from the cell phones and GoPro cameras belonging to the Hamas Nazis themselves. Many may be asking, why did they film their sadistic violence? Well, I'll tell you why. Very simple. They filmed it in order to terrorize the Israeli public, to release these videos and put fear in the hearts of the citizens of Israel. By the way, this is what terrorists do. They terrorize. I have seen much footage over the past weeks that will be seared into my mind forever. But there is one sight that I keep on seeing when I try to sleep. In the video, one can see a terrible injured civilian, bloodied yet alive, laying on the ground as a Hamas savage screaming, Allahu Akbar, repeatedly pummels the man's neck with a garden hoe in order to decapitate him. The man on the ground is an agricultural worker from Thailand. He's not Israeli, he's not Jewish. He was merely alive trying to make a living for his family. But he was decapitated with a blunt gardening tool. Horrifying. Israel is not at war with human beings. We are at war with monsters. Here is the video. My mission distributed and will continue to distribute QR codes with a direct link to files where you can see this horror and many other Hamas atrocities. What you see here are not pictures from Auschwitz. 
but Israelis, raped, butchered, and burned alive. This is not Auschwitz. This is Hamas. There are no words in the English language, in any language, to describe the evil that we all just witnessed. And the reason it is not describable is because it has no place among humankind. Over 1,400 have been slaughtered, 1,000 injured, and over 220 hostages are being held right now by Hamas ISIS terrorists. To say that this is Israel's 9-11 would be an understatement. Proportionally, the death toll of this atrocity is 15 times bigger than 9-11. By the way, our enemies are not 7,000 miles away, they are 7,000 feet away in our own backyard. So for this reason, Israel's mission is to eradicate this evil from the earth. Eradicate. ISIS was the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, and Hamas is the Islamic State of Gaza. So just as was done with ISIS, Hamas must be no more. Our goal is to completely eradicate Hamas's capabilities, and we will use every mean at our disposal to accomplish this. Not for revenge, no. Not for retaliation, no. But to ensure that such depravity, such atrocities, never occurs again. Israel is at the forefront of the war on radical jihadist terror. And if Israel doesn't succeed in obliterating, obliterating Hamas's terror capabilities, the whole world will pay the price. Hamas's genocidal ideology, just like ISIS, Al-Qaeda, or the Ayatollah regime in Tehran, of Iran, is not just about destroying Israel. You all know it. It is ultimately about world domination, world. It is about bringing the jihad war to the soil of each and every one of your countries. They will not stop until they murder all of the infidels, as they call us. Colleagues, for the past 16 years, the international community and the UN have been complacent to Hamas's terror buildup in Gaza, complacent. The world has kept its head in the sand as Hamas embedded its missiles and rockets deep within and under the civilian population of Gaza. It, 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 it accepted an absurd reality that a law-abiding democracy could live side by side with cancerous genocidal terrorists that fire tens of thousands of missiles indiscriminately at our civilians, unprovoked. We have seen that nothing can change Hamas's genocidal ideology. Not, sadly, not the re rehabilitation of Gaza, not economic incentives, not any promise of a brighter future. The UN tried. Many of you tried. But everyone failed. Everyone failed. And you know why? Because nothing can change a gen genocidal ideology. Nothing. There is only one solution to cutting curing a cancer. It is, is the evisceration of every cancerous cell. The international community has pure, poured billions of dollars into Gaza, and it all went to Hamas's war machine. It went to its subterranean city of terror. It went to its missile manufacturing facilities. And you remember, 18 years ago, Israel unilaterally withdrew from all of Gaza. We withdrew from all of Gaza. Hamas could have invested the international funding it received into building power plants, water desalination plants, every other civil infrastructure. But no. Instead, Hamas exploited every inch of the Gaza Strip for their violent goals. Because to Hamas, Gazan civilians are nothing more than mere cannon fodder. Human shields who in death become pawns for Hamas's libelous propaganda campaign. Hamas is counting on you. They are certain that despite the terror and massacre, the UN will still come to their rescue and prevent Israel from defending itself. Friends, Israel is on a rescue mission. 
our rescue mission to save our hostages, to save our future and to save the people of Gaza from their savage tyrants. A rescue mission. And colleagues, the rescue mission can end quickly. Now, it can end now. No need for complicated, empty resolutions. It can end now. Should Hamas put down their arms, return our hostages and turn themselves in, this war will end without one more shot being fired. Not even one. Why do you not unite and call on Hamas to do this? If the drafters of this resolution truly wants pe want peace, if they truly want an immediate solution, then why do they not demand this of Hamas? Instead, this resolution does the exact opposite of finding a solution. The exact opposite. Rather than promoting peace, it only ensures more violence. It should be called uniting for terror, not uniting for peace. Israel has been attacked and continues to be attacked. This is a fact right now in the south from Hamas and in the north from Hezbollah. Meanwhile, the resolution calls for an immediate ceasefire. A ceasefire means giving Hamas time to rearm itself so they can massacre us again. This is not speculation. They will do so. You all know this. Any call for a ceasefire is not an attempt at peace. It is an attempt to tie Israel's hands, preventing us from eliminating a huge threat to our citizens. But the resolution's distortions go even deeper than that. Hamas, the terror group that started this war, I reiterate, is not even mentioned, not even once. In fact, the only hidden reference to these barbaric terrorists can be found in calls on both parties. Both parties? This is a false immoral comparison between the law-abiding democracy of Israel and, a, and genocidal jihadists. And the drafters are counting on the fact that each and every distinguished representative here will blindly go along with their ploy. This resolution is an insult to your intelligence. And the only place this resolution belongs is in the dustbin of history. The dustbin of history. But colleagues, this resolution is not the only thing here today that is detached from reality. In a short time, a representative of the evil regime that trained, funded, and armed Hamas for the October 7th massacre will address you. The Ayatollah regime of Iran has the blood of thousands of Israelis on its hands. It has the blood of hundreds of thousands of oppressed Iranians of Ukrainians, of Americans, of Emiratis, and so many others on its hands. Iran is known as the world's number one state sponsor of terror, and for good reasons. It's, a completely, it's completely natural that the foreign minister of this brutal regime should be the speaker following the resolution drafter. The country with a Nazi ideology of annihilating Israel publicly says, stands in solidarity with its proxy, Hamas, which shares the same Nazi ideology and aims for our destruction. This is completely understandable. Indeed, mere days ago, he spoke with the leaders of Hamas and its twin terror group, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, praising them, praising them for the slaughter. And today, he is here to fill your ears with poison. Indeed, uniting for peace, uniting to butcher every Israeli to pieces. This man, the mass murderer, or any other representative of the terror regime in Iran has no place at the UN, let alone in the family of nations. It is a moral stain on the UN and the values it was founded upon. Distinguished colleagues, this week the UN celebrated its 78th birthday. Yet, looking at this resolution and the honorary guests hosted it today in these halls, this organization has shown that it is so broken, so morally corrupt, that I do not have high hopes 
that it will make it to 90, let alone 100. I'm just a realist. Today serves as the clearest proof that this body is bleeding its relevance, legitimacy, and justification. What we are witnessing today is a desecration, a desecration of what the UN was meant to be. Following the horrors of the Holocaust, this institution was established to prevent atrocities from repeating themselves. Yet, in these very halls, we have perpetrators of the most grotesque human rights violations and crimes against humanity who also exploit their power and so-called members of the family of nations only to single out low-abiding democracies such as Israel. If this organization wants to maintain any shred of legitimacy, it is imperative that you, please, distinguished representatives, no longer play along with this farce of anti-Israel double standards. Vote against this biased resolution. Stand on the right side of history. Don't stand with the genocidal jihadist committed to your destruction. Rise above internal political considerations and do what is moral and right. Mr. President, Israel will not stop fighting for the truth, even if we remain the sole voice of reason in these halls. Israel will continue combating the genocidal terrorists committed to our destruction. We will not rest until Hamas is obliterated and our hostages are returned home. And we will bring them home. I will conclude with a moment of silence for all the victims of Hamas's atrocity. If the supporters of this resolution choose to ignore the victims, in their text, I will pay respect to their memory. Thank you, Mr. President.